connecting. Am I on Wi-Fi? I don't know, honey. There you go, you're on! Yay! Hello, my hungry friends. I don't like how technology is. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Welcome to our Easter Live. Please let us know where you're from and if you can hear us well. I'm mic'd up today, so we should have um, good audio. We're still working. I'm trying to see if it's coming through or not. Hi, Anna. If people are saying hi, so it's working. It's working. Okay, I have to turn down my volume so that we're not. Okay, Hello, good. everyone. Where are you from, people? <laughs> okay, this is... <sighs> All right, everyone. Now, listen. Our daughter's not here, so I'm You're doing on, camera. I'm on this mic. I don't I know, know if they can they hear you. They can hear me, I promise. Okay. Uh, so I have to do both comments and filming because our daughter's not here. So, you know. She has, um, a, she has a life now. Yeah, she has a life now. <laughs> Boyfriend and everything. <laughs> Where are our friends from? Oh, this not coming through yet, my love. So let's just talk and I will, uh, you know, update you as we go. Oh, I thought you could see it on, on the no, screen. No, it's not coming up on that. Okay. All right, well, so we're here today to talk about Polish Easter. And if you've been around uh, the channel and Facebook and us in general, you know that um, I have published a book that has not come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Polish Kitchen, a book of memories, Easter edition. So this is a book that talks it. This is a guide to Polish Easter. So if you want to do one at home, all you have to do is uh, open it up and it'll tell you what you have to do, tell, tell you about our traditions and uh, explain why we do the things we do. Uh, there's about 36, 36 recipes in it. Um, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, that's a thing, and desserts. So I hope if you haven't uh, gotten one yet, uh, it, this will be printed in hardcover or published in hardcover, just like my family table book, uh, cookbook, so you can have a nice set. And later this year, I have two books coming. I don't know if I want to tell you yet. <laughs> Maybe? I never, I never Maybe? see her anymore. She's always at work. <laughs> so I'm going to update the uh, Christmas book to make it a nice set. I'm going to publish it in hardcover as well. And I'm also collaborating with a friend of mine who is into... Uh, baking into making sweets and uh, cakes and uh, she's an expert in it and we're going to publish a Polish traditional dessert book which I'm very excited about so hopefully uh, that will come out this fall and you are the first to hear about it yay <laughs> all right so today I'm going to prepare three dishes for you uh, but before we start with that I'm going to tell you a little bit about what our uh, a traditional Easter basket uh, looks like and how you put one together and we call it Schwinzonka and to do to do one to make one uh, it's really very symbolic it's not really to uh, get all the dishes into the basket and have them blessed it's just very symbolic and I talk about it in the book as well uh, so we just put kind of uh, s samples or uh, tastings of each of the items in, in the basket and then um, and they'll tell you what to do with it so this is normally what we used to do or this is normally what children do uh, that's their job for around Easter so they would get the basket and you would then um, put a nice little white uh, what, what would you call it? Like, like a, a doily. Like a doily. Will you come closer or you can see it well? I can see well? perfectly okay. wonderful, my love. To decorate your little basket. And then there's a few items that have to go in it. So we're going to have... And all the symbology uh, of it is in the book. You can... Uh, once you have time, you can uh, look at it. And so we're going to put a piece of bread in it. And I have a little salt and pepper. And you can arrange it how you want it. You can do a little bit bigger portions or smaller depending on your basket and then we have uh, normally I will put one hard-boiled egg or like this or just like this and I don't know if you can tell but this is the egg that I used for or one of them now that's a real egg right this that's is a real like egg. plastic egg no this is a real egg we call it vidmushka 
So to make it, you would uh, puncture the holes that you can see on top and bottom. Let's and see. oh yeah, and uh, the word vdmushka comes from word dmuhach, which means to blow. And you would literally blow the egg out through the other hole. Uh, and then you would let it dry for a few days so it dries on the inside. And then um, they would, I, this is not my work. <laughs> I wish I knew how to do this this well. But then the eggs are dyed and th these designs are scratched in, in t the paint. So <laughs> it's really intricate work. It's really beautiful. Uh, and this is what people would do uh, before Easter as well to decorate the eggs. And then once they're done, they're polished with, or they're just, there's some oil or something put on top just to make the egg look nice and shiny. So I normally would put one of them in, the, in here too. And then we have the horse radish from Bacik, as always, love Bacik. Uh, <laughs> I will put the link to Bacik's store in uh, the video description. Bacik also carries my family table cookbook in their store. And their store is um, also will be linked in the description below. So I have a little tasting of horseradish and then a little piece of Polish smoked sausage. And I made babka today. So I could put a piece of it in there as well. And this is uh, marble babka. And the recipe for this is also in in my cookbook. Oh. Well, you cut a wedge, so I it's did. Like, it wedges itself <laughs> in there. So. <laughs> and then normally I would also take half of an egg and put it in here. And I'm going to cut this in half like this. And we'll use it for our other recipe. So then when it's blessed, you can can see like this. Okay, I'm gonna come in and give a close up of it. And then it's normally decorated with uh, this green, the, these green uh, branches. Uh, it's called uh, bukspan in Polish. I believe English name for it is boxwood. Boxwood. And we would just stick pieces of this, and some people would do some. Maybe daffodils, other tiny branches in here, or maybe um, what do you call it when when uh, pussy willows? Yeah, like um, yeah, willows. Willows, yeah, yeah. yeah, those would maybe go in here too, like this. And then you would take this to uh, church on Saturday before before Easter, and normally in Catholic church there would be a uh, basket blessing normally uh, every 15 minutes really really short kind of uh, just a blessing not a whole mass uh, where you would everyone would line up their basket either like in the middle hall or in front of the altar or however it was organized and the priest would come out and say prayer and then bless the foods and everyone would gather their baskets and then go home and we always had like a little cover for it for for the road and I remember when I was little I could just I could not wait to get the cake out and like I just want to bite the little piece of sausage <laughs> but this would be uh, guarded until Easter Sunday on Sunday morning then we would take the egg out of the uh, out of the Svinsonka out of the basket and we would divide it into uh, amongst our family members and then everybody would get a piece and say the blessing or say well wishes for the year and then we could eat you know the rest of the foods as well and use the salt and the horseradish and everything so this is our shkintonka what do you think people i will tell you what they think <laughs> <laughs> i really miss having you out here okay so i will set this aside Although I do want to eat the sausage. And we can uh, proceed with cooking. I think before I, because I started with these, we'll make the eggs first. We have people in from 
all over the place. Washington State, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Oh, Hello, cool. Eau Claire. Cool. Chicago. And yes, one Italia. The tattoos are for Easter and for year round. They're year round tattoos. <laughs> they stay. Uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Right mm. on. Okay, I've lived there for a little bit. Burbank. You got Ohio. Um, Indiana. Minneapolis. All kinds of places. Barilek, Poland. Who? Oh, Barilina. Chase Martin. Mm. Maybe I should be eating while I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with our Yaya Poporsku. So this, these are the eggs that are cooked uh, in eggshell or cooked, served in eggshells. So as you noticed, it takes a little skill to do this. And I'm going to need your help. Oh. <laughs> Hold the Wait, I do have a plate here now, so <laughs> that's okay. So, uh, I've pre-boiled, hard-boiled eggs, six eggs. What we do next is very carefully and gently, or not gently really, we have to cut and the... Carefully. Yeah. Cut the eggs with shells in half. And if you have some that kind of, you know, go a little... Off, then just take them off. Did you do these when you were a kid too? We, my grandma would do these, but um, I wasn't super huge fan of them when I was young. Then years after that, that I, I ate some, and I'm like, these are really good. <laughs> but they're, they're traditional. It's a traditional recipe, and. They're called yaya po polsku, so like Polish style eggs. So it's not because I'm Polish and I'm making them like this. <laughs> They're actually called that. Anya is asking, why do we keep the shells on? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's ever, how you... the recipe said to do. Like that's the traditional recipe. It's just like they said in Fiddler on the Roof. It's tradition. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah. And it's kind of hard. So sometimes maybe it would be better to... Because ne next we have to take out the boiled egg uh, and use reuse the shells. So this maybe not a trick, f you know, a dish for everybody to do. But maybe... Um, you take out, or you don't use the eggshells, you just take out portion of it like you would do with um, like a devil deviled egg, egg yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you don't need to be going to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, we're going to the emergency Yeah. Who wants to see Polish Hospital? You, know, <laughs> you can sit with us for hours. Okay, and then I'm going to need a bowl. This is how uh, Look Cooking Live goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely different from... <laughs> I have a lot of bowls out. And yet, I need one more that I don't have. Oh, maybe this one. And then, we're going to put the eggs in here. The yolks? Just the the yolks, yolks and the whites. Oh, and the whites. We have to gently... Oh, boy, I was going to say, this has got to be gentle, doesn't it? Yep. It takes a little skill. Ooh, I do not have the patience for this. You folks have the out. patience for this kind of a thing? And you're going all the way to the shell, huh? Yep. Like a weird avocado. Wow. You know, a lot of a lot of things for Polish um, holidays are kind of time consuming though. You know what I mean? Like it is. and Ushki and Ushka. Ushka. Well, is it one Ushka and two Ushki? <laughs> no. Ah. One Ushko. Va uh? Ushka. <laughs> Um, 
I don't know what I was saying. I was talking about how it's time consuming. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. True, but like a lot of those dishes you can prepare ahead of time. Right. And these eggs, uh, they taste pretty good cold or, you know, fresh off the pan. So you can m make it and uh, put it in the fridge and just when it's time to eat, you pull it out. And I do talk about it in the book a lot it, that uh, like all of those dishes can pretty much be made ahead of time. And because there's so many of them and um, we, we will then eat them the same food pretty much all day. But like nobody minds because one, we spend so much time making it and two, we probably won't have some of these dishes for another year again. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's like Thanksgiving, you know? You take, spend a day or two cooking and then right. you eat it and then you don't have it again for another year. What are some of the dishes that you you guys cook around the holidays, or do we you have, have do you have any questions you could? We have greetings from Erie, Pennsylvania, and from England. Cool. Hello, Carrie Ann from England. <laughs> and Argentina, Gabby, from Argentina. Aloha. Cool. They don't say aloha in Argentina. <laughs> yeah, probably Buenas. say hola. Buenas noches. Hola? <laughs> I don't know. I and mean, we need to go there and find out. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings from Switzerland. Cool. Hey, all right. Bring me some chocolate. I probably should have done this. Uh, How about you just do a couple? <laughs> well, no, because then I have, you know, all the other stuff that oh. is, like, have to measure and stuff. Oh, right, 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 right. So tell us a story and entertain us. Do we have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> all right, people, help us out. Let's have some questions. <laughs> Have you ever had this dish before? Like, is it something that you remember eating? Let me see here. North Carolina. Okay, I'm getting... support Anna and hit that like button. Yeah, that sounds good. It's free. <laughs> it's free, that's for sure. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get back into some more videos, guys. But with this beautiful woman concentrating on producing another book, uh, the time did not exist, and I'm not doing cooking videos, <laughs> so... <laughs> My aunt used to make soup and sometimes a casserole that used all the ingredients that were in the basket, says Dolores. Oh. That's a good idea. A casserole with, like, the yeah. eggs and the cake and stuff? Yeah. John, okay. John wants to know, uh, he says, I love hearing stories about your grandmother. Did she have a favorite food or dish that she would serve as a special treat? Everything she made felt like a special treat. Uh, <laughs> and she cooked everything uh, that I, back then I didn't know how to cook. So I'm going to answer that question okay. in a second, but I want to start uh, doing something here so we can continue cooking. Okay. So I'm going to heat up some oil or butter and I'm going to put, I'm going to start sauteing mushrooms. So for this recipe, we're going to uh, stuff these eggs, eggshells with some button mushrooms. So I'm going to start heating butter here and I started uh, shredding my mushrooms on just this pan grater okay. and this is kind of an easy way to have small pieces uh, without spending a bunch of time cutting chopping and chopping chopping and, chopping, and, chopping, chopping, yep. and chopping so somebody did ask the question right before you said it are you saving the eggshells for something and yes that, yes um so going back to the grandma question she, uh, there was so many different dishes in her repertoire, I guess, her, that it, like, it never got boring. There was just different soups all the time and different dumplings and, and then she loved cooking for us. So all I had to do is just ask for it. And like, I, I love these dumplings called pizze 
their potato dumpling and they're 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 kind of you know about that big round and they're stuffed with with meat mixture kind of like meat pierogi and they're really pain in the butt to make sometimes especially for you know person that's going to college and uh, <laughs> so all I'd have to do is just ask grandma to make me some and like it's just such a comfort food so there wasn't really just one dish that she would make because she was so good at at like making it all and I'm sure most of our viewers share this kind of the same memory of grandma or whoever that just whatever they made it just hit the spot perfectly yeah, yeah. <coughs> sorry that's okay okay so i have whoopsie so i have these we have we have cindy saying aloha from Waikoloa, hawaii oh cool girl you're up early I want to be in Hawaii right now. <laughs> you all see what it's like outside? Do you see the white stuff? We got snow yesterday. Yeah, we got snow. So we're about, we were talking about hopping a flight to This is quite unusual. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my recipe for Yaya Popolsku. Aha. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, sneak peek into the book. Sneak peek. I'm just going to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, and then I'm going to take these eggs. I could also uh, do the same, put them in the grinder like that. Or you can just like do this and get it all smashed up. Just smash them up just so it's. Or you could do a food processor. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. Oh, my butter is melting. So I'll put the mushrooms. In here. And we're just sauteing those lightly just, or like all the way through? I just want to get some of the water out. Okay. So I'm going to just add a little bit of salt. Roger says, hi from Ferndale, Michigan. Love your shows. Please make more of both the kitchen clothes and the recipes. I promise <laughs> we are. We want Roger, to. We will. We will. We will. I promise. But it's just, we're so busy. Well, she is. <laughs> so let these go for a little while. And I'll continue with the Mary's eggs. Mary's asking which size eggs works best for this? Regular, extra large, or jumbo? Oh, I'd probably go with the big ones. I would too. And, um,. Yeah, probably the bigger the better. If you don't feel like messing around with these deviled eggs, or not deviled eggs, these yaya poporsku, make the deviled eggs. Those are a lot easier. <laughs> you can just boil the eggs. Those are also in the recipe book, though? Yeah. In the cookbook? Mm -hmm. The recipe book. <laughs> All right, let's I see where else we got people from. Put a little bit of salt in here. From MCR UK. I don't know what that means, MCR. Uh, but you know, hi. What does MCR mean? Anybody know? So I have a question for you people who are watching. Uh, I hope you can hear me. But what do you want us to show you on Kitchen's Clothes? Now, it's easy for us to show you recipe or I mean restaurants here in Szczecin we can do more of those uh, traveling is a little bit harder but does seeing things in Szczecin interest you still which is where we live Szczecin is where we live by the way if you don't know or is that just not what you want and greater Europe if we travel into Germany or we go to France or something do you guys want to see that stuff or not so much Oh, it's Manchester. Okay, hi. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, so. Did you find a little shell? Mm. So how, how fine are you going to get this? Um, a little bit finer. Not these big lumps. Just so we make... They're about the same as the mushroom bits. 
Would it use a tater masher? Uh, maybe. Pickled herring. Snooze and swah, some snoah likes pickled herring for Easter. Do you, do you ever see pickled herring from Easter? Uh, no. Herring is normally, um, if you, uh, if you, if you've heard me talk about Easter before or, or the holidays, normally we kind of, <laughs> there's a s strict <laughs> quote unquote list of dishes that we like to eat. And, um, Around around East or for Easter, it's normally the sour rice soup, uh, which will be served for for breakfast with uh, fresh sausage, and uh, the eggs and lots of eggs. They'll be we'll be eating eggs all day long. Uh, uh, gelatins, <laughs> not the sweet kind, but the the meat kind. So we'll make either pork. Uh, also known as jimne <laughs> cold, cold feet, or chicken kind. Or, um, we'll do a couple of homemade lunch meats. Um, and herring is more um, a Christmas dish for us. So, so some of our people are saying stay in Poland. Some are saying. Uh, Variety is the spice of life. Okay. Um, Watcher would like to see more soups. Thank you, RV Davy. We appreciate it for your support. Um, Chris uh, said maybe we should take a tour of where we get our groceries. A supermarket or a farmer's market. Well, yeah. Chris, you're luck in luck. Uh, if you go on to Polish Your Kitchen on our channel, we have videos for both those things. Family-owned businesses here in our town, baby. We know some, yeah. some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to forget anything, so I apologize if I'm looking at the recipe. But So, once the mushrooms are cooked, I'm going to want them to cool, just cool off a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm adding a little bit of greens. I have uh, chopped dill here. You can do parsley or whatever your favorite uh, herb is. And I'm going to add probably like a good tablespoon and oh, right away it looks nicer doesn't it looks lovely and we're gonna add some um shan, shan horseradish. horseradish and the recipe says i'm just gonna follow the recipe <laughs> but it's just a guideline you can add however much you want it says two tablespoons. If it's too hot, let's try this one, huh? It's bachi, so it's gonna be good. Mmm, tasty. Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Clear the nostrils out. Yeah, it? a little bit. Add a little mustard. Uh, not mustard, but horseradish. And do a little bit more pepper if you want. Somebody said we should go check out the food truck scene. I agree completely. Spring is coming, so hopefully we can find some food trucks. Right, babe? Yeah, food trucks. We are so ready for the spring. I'm sorry, I'm not even like connecting to you at all. Um, I'm very excited for spring to come. I'm ready to go to Hawaii right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take the mushrooms out so they're just like lightly browned but they're a little bit too hot but we're just trying to get the water out so I'm gonna just set them aside for a few minutes as we do something else and then we'll finish this off and you can keep this pan because we're gonna be uh, putting the eggs in here before we're done with it so just for a second, I'll set this aside. And maybe in the meantime, we'll do, we'll do mazurek, huh? Sounds perfect. So mazurek is another uh, traditional uh, Polish dessert that we really only eat around Easter. Otherwise, we'll have to wait another year for it. And what it is, and I've prepped, uh, prepped it because otherwise we'd be cooking here for hours. And it's 
just uh, butter crust as thin uh, or as thick as you want on it but on the thinner side probably about a third of an inch or so and then you put on top whatever your heart desires there's many chefs th that many recipes for mazurek uh, the only thing they have in common is this this bottom so uh, on my blog and in the book you will see two different varieties and uh, I'm gonna do the one with you call it dolce de leche or caramel or um, it's the product of what you get from boiling condensed sweetened milk and if you've never done that I encourage you to try Yo, it's amazing all you do is take a can of sweetened condensed milk you put it in hot water in a pot with water to, so it's covered and start boiling on the lowest setting just so small bubbles for three hours and the milk turns into this caramel and it's nothing like you've ever had before i bought i bought this one because i don't want to spend three hours cooking it but, but it looks, it looks like, like this. this yeah <laughs> it's kind of soft and i put this in warm water so it's good that you open it when it's not super hot obviously out of the out of the water but let it cool off a little bit and uh when it's still just tiny bit warm uh it doesn't all solidify and then we're going to take it and taste it obviously and it's so good it's sweet and caramely and amazing and then all we do is take this we'll call it caramel and we're going to spread it on our on our bottom and I baked this a little while ago so it it's a little warm yet but it's not hot and again you can go as thick or as thin as you want and this one's super easy you can take the kids and get them in the kitchen and I mean who doesn't like spreading sweet stuff that sticks to your fingers I like it can lick it and, <laughs> <laughs> and good thing about mazurek is uh it's actually better to make it like co even couple weeks ahead of time and the bottom is made with with the butter crust so it's very very crumbly but when it sits with the stuff on top or if if it's uh, jelly or whatever you put on it it'll kind of soak up the moisture from a couple weeks yeah Really? Mm -hmm. And then what do you keep in the fridge? Nope. Keep it on, on, your, on the counter, just kind of lightly, not like covered with plastic, just like covered with maybe like tin a foil. Cloth or something? Cloth or tin foil, so it's not super tight. No kidding. Mm hmm. And then, and then you eat it. That goes against my American sensibilities. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you put uh, whatever layer, of this sweet caramely delicious thing oh, I hope you try it you will never not do it again <laughs> <laughs> and then you can do I even was thinking to do you could do the same dough it's the cookie dough R roll it out a little bit thinner and cut out little chickens or little chickpeas or eggs or you know shape of an egg and you can put it on here uh, to decorate with I have some almonds and I can put them in uh, the shape of the oh maybe the white ones the pussy willow that we see in the spring that's a common decoration style for mazurek or people do some people who are super talented will make a lamb um, of you know sh out of a shape my lamb would end up looking like some kind of stray dog <laughs> yeah. or a giraffe or a giraffe greetings to mary who's watching with her um 94 year old father i'm oh, sorry this is well, probably very careful. where's dad from yeah where's dad from also um, from British Columbia Caribou region in Canada. Cool. Hello, modern girl. You're way up there. And Linda's asking if we did find a new office after 
The one we were After the up disaster? Oh, that? Yes, we did. We yes, got, we did. We got a new one. And we're all set up there. And next week, I get to walk up to 500, oh no, 2,000 new books upstairs because there's no elevator. <laughs> so I'm up and down the stairs. Oh, I forgot to do chocolate. Oh no. I just remembered. I was thinking, oh, no. like, there's something missing. <laughs> Do you but, have a, a chocolate drizzle? Well, you can. And this is so this is how easy this is. You could make the caramel ahead of time and then even buy the squeezable chocolate and just do the drizzle. I was gonna do like I have the chocolate waiting here to be melted. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. But and then the kids can decorate however they want. You can do a sprinkle you can do like i'm trying to do you know little designs here with with uh almonds um you can have as much fun uh with it as you want you can even do like colorful m m's or you know the egg shaped m and m and m m and m's and it's ready to eat now but uh word of caution the bottom is very cr crumbly uh so best to do at least a couple of days ahead of time and just kind of leave it on the counter and wait for everything to kind of combine and and i will not be making chocolate i guess <laughs> <laughs> melting chocolate's so, easy guys so here's your mazurek Yay. Uh, another good option is to do uh which is also in my uh, recipe book a mazurek with kind of fruity uh topping so i did i think lemon and fig jam so you just kind of spread it on on there and you can top it with chocolate whatever your heart desires go for it and but if you do uh join our group on facebook post your kitchen made by you and you can post pictures of whatever you made for us janice is asking our butter lambs um still used in polish they're really popular in polish american easter <clears throat> um not not in, not anymore so much um not amongst our friends and family yeah there probably sure are people that still do it but. yeah we used to do like sugar lamb made uh, sh lamb made of sugar that would kind of also be put in in our basket but the butter you know it's kind of tough because it melts and you don't want to put it in a basket maybe you see it some in someone in some people's homes uh during easter as part of the uh decoration do we have a video on the Missouri? Do we have a video on I the Missouri? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think we do. I think so. Somebody I think, asked. We probably do. I, I think we have a video pretty much on everything. I think so. Uh, and I think Mazurik as well. This is still a little bit too hot. So I'm going to let this sit for a little while. And maybe we do uh, our next recipe. Okay. My hands are sticky. Hang on. So yeah, guys, spring is coming up, so travel will open up, and we will get our camper out, Ruthie, <laughs> and we're going to go do some traveling. Okay, and for our next trick, our next Polish trick, <laughs> I have <laughs> Pascha. Uh, so Pascha is uh, another, obviously, traditional Easter uh, dessert, super rich, uh, made of, you might want to come over on this side. Okay made of farmer's cheese and i have uh about one pound a little bit under one pound is this lit there you go that's better yeah is that a little bit better i'm gonna tighten this and then so i'm gonna do i'm gonna blend this in my food processor with about half a cup of sweet cream this is this is this is tvaruk yep uh, if you can't buy tfaruk and you don't feel like making it, which I do have a recipe on my website for, can you uh, just do um, probably, um, not completely. I would do part uh, like cream cheese, part ricotta, and part, uh, what you said, cottage, cottage cheese. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add half a cup of cream, but not all at once. Okay, I'm going to put this up here so that people can see it. But yeah. please, time sensitive, because my arms are... See what I'm doing, guys? <laughs> I'm doing this, and I'm 
fat, so this doesn't work good. It's gonna be loud. Okay, go. What are you adding? Sweet cream. Sweet cream. How much? Half a cup. Half a cup. And how long do you do that for? Until smooth. Okay. And this shouldn't take long because it was... So here in Poland, we're lucky. You can buy this cream cheese that's... Or farmer's cheese that's um, already prepared for making uh, cheesecake, which this pretty much is a cheesecake filling. So could you uh, use Philadelphia cream cheese? Um, yeah. 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 I'm going to just do a tiny bit more. Just get the lumps out. This is why this is why we edit things. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is ready. We're gonna set this aside for now, uh, and we're gonna cook some eggs. Kind of. We're gonna scramble. Or well, we're gonna try very hard not to do that. No, <laughs> I need to reach down right behind you. Okay, I will back up. Okay. I'm gonna get a hand mixer and some. Ah. You closed my... Oh, sorry. Closed oh, no. Oh, no. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> and I need to go over here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. I forgot that I'm going to need this. <laughs> well, that's the part of a life. It doesn't... It's not the edited version. It's the one Do you make a dessert with poppy seeds ever? Is that for Easter or is that um, for like, is that Christmas more? The, yeah, the poppy seed roll, the Makovitz, we normally make it for for e uh, for Christmas too. Um, so Easter is normally the babka, which we have several, you know, millions types of babka, which is the the round kind of round uh, the, bunt the, bunt, the bunt cake, and we have chocolate kind, and we have the yeasted kind with raisins, and we have. The marble, which I like the most, which I made today. Um, there's several others that I haven't explored yet, which I'm looking forward to doing when we work on our book with my friend Magda. So we're going to be uh, doing all the babki. Uh, I have to go over here and plug in. Um, yeah, so the puppies oh not so long <laughs> i will go over here <laughs> i don't need this anymore so i'll unplug this and plug in and we'll work on this sector of the kitchen all right and here i put my egg yolks I have three egg yolks this is so different. <laughs> this is way different. <laughs> I hope everyone is just having a nice cup of coffee and is relaxed and because this, this takes time. For those that are going to watch it in post, you can just fast, fast forward. forward. <laughs> but we appreciate all you guys that are up and watching us today live. We really do. Another uh, great recipe for dessert, Easter dessert is, uh, I recently posted it on my website too, is sweet cheese yeasted kind of braided uh, dessert. That was just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's in the book as well. Okay, and now I'm going to need some powdered sugar. Our kitchen is only so big, guys, so that's why the camera angles are <laughs> Sorry. And you can do as, many, as much or a little bit less uh, 
what I have in the recipe. Which the is recipe much? says one cup. I'm gonna do three quarter cup. Just cause. Cause why not? Cause maybe we go overboard a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna do kogil mogil at first. Blending noises. And what is the idea for this? We're getting it to work consistently. So right now we're just we're trying to combine the two and fluff it a little bit, get a little air in there, uh, and then we're gonna put it over. I don't know if people can hear me. Put it over a boiler to cook the eggs. A double boiler? Yep, because this dessert doesn't get baked. Okay. You don't want no salmon amount of Right. So right now we're really making kogel mogel. <laughs> the is sugar kogel mogel is, is in my in, in my red book, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe not. It's on know. the in that it's on the website for sure. So okay. Just egg yolks mixed with sugar. We used to eat that when we were kids as a snack, after school snack. <laughs> and I'm gonna start heating this water. So then this will get put over top of this. And I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Maybe people couldn't hear me at all through this, so... No, no, let me see. <laughs> In the chats here. Alright. Oh, Wanda says she's trying some of our recipes using gluten-free ingredients. Wanda, cool. if you could shoot Anna an email um, letting us know how that works out, because a lot of people ask for that kind of stuff. You see, I'm not missing anything. I don't think I'm missing anything. How am I seeing? In the ingredients. Was in the, the sweet cheese yeah. dessert? Okay. Oh. oh! What happened? I thought it stopped working. Oh, wait, hold on. I screwed up my monitor. There we go. Voice is fine, they can hear us. Oh, okay, good. That's awesome. helpful that I have the mic on me, I think. Yeah, I think so. That's why we switched to that because of the whole mic. Let's see, we got farmer cheese, yep. sweet cream, yep. egg yolk. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Butter, sugar. Yep. Butter. Oh no, I need butter. And vanilla extract. Oh, I need butter. Here's the butter. Can you cut me a piece? Okay. Or how uh, how much does it say? In that? Right. It says two ounces or fifty grams of butter. Okay, so about half that. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna try to do this on the screen. One hand. Don't worry about my fingers touching it. You ain't eat it. I hope you wanted it in there. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is not health food. No. Okay, now I have butter fingers. Literally. Here. Hold on. I have, I have okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, two days ago or, or so, Mark threw me a surprise party with, with all of our friends to celebrate the first anniversary of my cookbook, My Family Table. And he invited all the friends uh, to one of my favorite restaurants in, in Stettin. Like, they had t-shirts made and we had a nice celebration. And we had an idea to then uh, take those t-shirts, get them washed up, obviously and uh, list them on our website and then take the proceeds and give them to the charity that we're supporting this year which is a hospice here sorry children's hospice, children's hospice in, in, in my hometown so if you're interested in in purchasing one one just keep an eye out we'll post some information soon I need something that is going to keep me from burn not burning myself. <laughs> hey, it comes around. 
What goes around goes around. <laughs> So this is a little bit of uh, a process, so I apologize. Starting to warm up now. Let me see if there's some questions we can answer. Okay. While we're doing this. Doing this thing. Let's see here. Yes, the book was edible too. The book was edible, yeah, the book yes. Was the case. <laughs> it was edible, that's right. We didn't eat it though, we kept it. Yeah, so my friend Magda, who we're writing a book together, she did the cake. And we're going to try to include um, one or two kind of fancy cakes like that. Yeah. And she specializes actually in um, cooking for or preparing desserts for people who have uh, specific uh, food restrictions, either gluten-free or uh, dairy-free, whatever restriction you have. Uh, she makes so we're probably gonna include a recipe or two with uh, with that maybe like a vegan uh, yeasted babka or something like that. Somebody asked, uh, was asking about the stories of your tattoos. Uh, there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> They're just designs. Yeah, sorry. Most of our tattoos are just things that. <laughs> I know a lot of you people don't like them, but you know, they're not yours, so it's okay. Um, and Daddy's asking for this to be made ahead of time, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so this actually has to be made ahead of time because uh, once once we do this part and uh, we combine it with the cheese, it will go into the fridge where it actually has to solidify. And sometimes it comes a little loosey-goosey, I guess you can say, a little loose. So I have done this before where I add gelatin, uh, a little bit of gelatin, just powdered into, um, into it. So when it comes out of the fridge, you can cut it a little bit better. Uh, and otherwise it's just kind of cheese filling, which is very, very rich and delicious. <laughs> I think we're starting to cook a little bit. So now this is getting a little bit more liquidy because the butter is kind of melting or has melted and once it gets a little bit more heat the and eggs cook, it'll become a little bit more smooth and a little bit more solid. Not really solid, but You gotta continue stirring so the eggs don't curdle. They yeah, don't want to curdle eggs. They no. need to get scrambled eggs. That's yeah. Fun. Scrambled eggs with sugar. Hey y'all from Plano, Texas. We got a good buddy of mine from Plano, Texas. Mr. Blaine Harrison. Hello, Mr. Blaine Harrison. Cape Cod. I really want to go to Cape Cod today. Somebody stand by. Do it for Cape Cod. I want to go to Cape Cod. Right? No. So this summer, guys, we're going to be spending some time in Wisconsin. Does anybody know where Stevens Point is? Would anybody be interested in a meetup? Hey, the question. We'll a meetup if we have time. We're still, we're still flushing up the vacation, but we'll see. Is it kind of like a custom or something like that? Um. It is before you add the cheese to it. Once you add the cheese, it's, it's a little bit more like a like cheesecake. I think we need to reevaluate the, the dishes we do Well, no, I, I, this, is, this was requested. Oh, well, it was requested? Yeah. Okay, well, people let me have to sit through it. Sorry. <laughs> you asked yeah, I asked, I asked in our group or in the event, uh, people to let me know what dishes they wanted made and Pascal was one of them. Alright, well very good. Judith says that her door is always open in Cape Cod if you want to. Oh, that's so cool.
We're cooking eggs! We're, co we're cooking eggs, people! <laughs> You can see how it's getting a little bit more uh, s solid. Not really solid, but a little bit more. Um, what, how do I say this? Firm. Firm, yeah. And you got the sucker cranked up, right? Like yeah. It's boiling underneath there. Yeah. Stick your finger in and see if it's hot. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't have any fingers! I know I was in the army, but I'm not an idiot. I'm serious! I don't want to! <laughs> well, get a spoon! You want me to spoon my finger in here? Yeah! Alright, well, don't grind it off. Hold Quick! On. It's warm now, huh? It's warm or hot? Well, it didn't burn me, but it's warm. I'm going over here. I'm looking at things here. Alright. Stan's got a cousin in Green Bay. I love Green Bay. That'd be cool. I'm just trying to cool the eggs a little bit now. So how do you know when to when to take it off the heat? So like grandma said. <laughs> you'll see then you'll know. <laughs> So I kind of pay attention to. Oh, thank the Lord! Oh my goodness, that's oh, so goodness. long and loud. That noise, um, I look at the consistency okay. of it, and it changes from being very liquidy. I think we don't have to talk so loud anymore. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> to to a little bit more like custard, I guess you could say. Okay. And um, just a couple of minutes uh, of it being oh. on the with the heat and eggs will be cooked so i'm just gonna take and basically with the eggs you're just trying to like are you just making them safe to eat yeah okay so they don't really they're not gonna yeah so you don't gotta fret too much is my point right? no like it's just getting it so that it's not gonna give you something. right but like i said i don't know if you could hear me um you're not we're not really we're not baking this this is like all of the process of cooking happens here so um that's why we have to make sure that we cook the eggs okay and then i put the cheese in here and i already added vanilla and next we are gonna put the nuts and raisins and it also gives you freedom i guess to kind of let's move can we move to the front here mm -hmm. now All yep. right. My arm hurts <laughs> <laughs> from doing this number. We need to get into the gym, eh? This is easier when you were helping me with it last time when we were making it. <laughs> I can't have a cameraman today. And this is kind of came out liquidy. And that's the joys of the live, right? Yep. <laughs> Like, I can tell that this is not going to solidify at all. So, like, I would, I think this was a little bit less cheese than I made it last time. So, I would put a little bit of, um... You want some more butter? Gelatin in it. No, it's okay now. I'd have to blend it and... Oh, yeah. It's okay. But to it, we will add... I have raisins. Oh, look at my arm. My arm's shaking. <laughs> 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 and we have pecan, peca, pecans. Pecans, pecans. Here, or you could do walnuts, or you could do um, all sh 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 shaved, not shaved almonds. Shaved, yeah, shaved, shaved almonds. almonds. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you were putting on the other yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So you're just chopping these, huh? Yeah, just so they're a little bit smaller. This is. I really appreciate, we really appreciate all you guys tuning in because this gets, like we're nervous about it all day. <laughs> Until we start doing it, then it feels friendly. Isn't that, babe? Yeah. 
This is really liquidy. Cheryl's asking when in Stevens Point. Well, we don't know for sure. We we don't know for sure. Either June, July, or August, or maybe September. We don't. We, <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting on some things on our end here to uh, suss out a little bit on our house build, and um, someday we'll talk to you guys about that. Uh, but we're waiting on that, and then we'll find out when we're coming to the, to America. So this is very liquidy. <laughs> it shouldn't be this liquid if you're making it and it's this liquidy. Uh, add more cheese um, uh, because it'll just be like this. It will not solidify. So, <laughs> but normally I would do, I would take this and I'm very discouraged now. <laughs> I don't have dishes not come out often. There you go. Walk it <laughs> off, baby. Walk it off. Um, this is what I would do. Well, let's do it. Well, I think it's too liquidy and it would just run through. But what you normally do is either give up and put it in a nice bowl. <laughs> and it will solidify a little bit and it just then you take cookies and scoop some out and eat it <laughs> but normally i would take a cheesecloth nice and clean nice and new put it over a strainer like this and then i would take a glass of some sort put it in the middle can you see well? Yep, yep. And then I would pour this a... pour this around so it kind of creates shape of a bundt cake. Okay. And then kind of cover it with like put a bowl underneath obviously. Right. There's, there'll be a little bit of runoff maybe but not not like it shouldn't run through your strainer. Um, and then I would cover it with plastic and put it in the fridge and overnight and then the next day you put it on a plate and if you go to my website and search for Pascha, P-A-S-H-C-H-A, -A, you will see a picture of it and then so you flip it around. Um, How about we make a video for it? Maybe we do a we'll video a and then hopefully it won't nice be so runny. Nice I now think I'm thinking uh, the two squares of cheese, they were yeah. 200 grams. Yeah. Uh, so 400 altogether. So I'm, I'm 100, uh, 100 grams short. That's it then. That's huge. So, and then that's how you make Pascha. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, but you know, hey, that's how we so do See if we can screw up the eggs now. All right. Who's yeah. in? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It'll be okay. <laughs> Okay. But it tastes delicious. Like this stuff is really good. It's super rich and buttery. <laughs> Florida lady and... said she would definitely eat that dip. <laughs> 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 Do you know what sepal se sepalina are? Sepalina. Zeppeline. Yeah, somebody's asking uh, if we could do a video on that sometime. I think those are like uh, round dumplings that are long uh, with meat in them. Right? Right, right, right. Roger's saying we're, uh, have, have we been to Mackinac Island? This is kind of a joke between me and the wife. Because I've been to Mackinac Island many times as a youth. And I've been threatening to take Aja there for years. Threatening, yeah. And uh, we just haven't gotten there. But maybe this trip. Maybe this trip. Because normally we land in Philadelphia or New York and we visit some friends out there. And then we drive to Wisconsin through the Upper Peninsula. Because I hate going to Chicago. No offense, Chicagoans. Love you to death. But um, I like to drive it in the woods. So maybe this year. Okay. On to the eggs. All right. I have the egg yolks and egg whites. And um, dill. And dill. I'm going to add my mushrooms to this. And give this a taste. I'm also watering for this. It's really <laughs> delicious. And it's kind of unusual, too. Like, this isn't something that you 
would like we probably had anywhere else before. But I like, never had them until you made them for the book. Oh really? Nope. But maybe try like the version with um without the eggshells if you feel this is a little bit too complicated or whatever. So then would you you just put them in I would just take out the, the yolks. you know po egg yolk and then maybe uh, a little bit of the egg white. Okay. Leave some of the egg white. Oh, just try it. Maybe like it's not that maybe it's not that bad for you. So the next we're going to add uh, one egg yolk my arm is like <laughs> one egg yolk, but before I do that, oh my goodness. <laughs> this just feels weird. I want to taste this. See if I want to add a little bit more of anything. And add a little bit more horseradish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A little bit more pepper. You gotta taste as you go, right? Yep. Give this a stir. And then I'm gonna break the egg white. So you're gonna add a raw yolk? I'm gonna add a raw yolk to it, yep. Oh man, I need to exercise more. <laughs> <sighs> we should start doing yoga. I need yoga. to make Pascha more. <laughs> oh, all right, there you go. Dong. And then this will get mixed up. So this will kind of keep our filling together a little bit better. A little bit of a binder. Yeah. Let me give this a good stir. And then we're going to take a spoon. Oh, take a clean spoon. And then we're going to take each egg. And gingerly. I'm going to fill it to the to the top. Okay. I would love to help you with this, but you know, I this can't is, be bothered. This is where you have you know children's children's family members get them in there somebody's asking did we both meet in poland interestingly enough no um we have a whole video on that too if you'd like to see it but the the cliff's notes while odds is doing this uh the short story is that she was a foreign exchange student in my high school in stevens point it was in 1993 yeah yeah and um i fell madly in love with her and hounded her until she agreed to go out on a date with me. And then she fell madly in love with me. Um, <laughs> the school year ended and she had to go back to Poland and broke my heart into a million little bite-sized pieces. And then decades later, well, no, not decades, uh, many years well, later, eight years later? A decade more, you could um, say. Yeah, pretty much. Um... Kismet happened and we got back together again. Uh, we ran into each other in Wisconsin when I was on leave from the army and she was visiting her old host family. And that was 20 years ago. And so we've been together ever since. And when I retired from the army, she said, it's time to go home to Poland. Yeah. I was just visiting, by the way. I went for a visit for the summer and I got married. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I came home and you're like, oh, there's my love. I can't be without him. That's not how it went. Yeah, it is, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is there something else you could substitute for the mushrooms or just leave them out? I guess Amy G doesn't care for mushrooms very much. Yeah, you could leave them out. Um, I don't know if you could substitute with something. Let's think. What could we do? Mm. You could do breadcrumbs for a little bit of a binder or um, maybe you could... Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah, leave, just leave them out. Yeah, probably just, just but do do horseradish. I think that's a kind of gives. Do you just not any mushrooms or in certain form? Like our daughter doesn't care for the texture of mushrooms, but if it's in different like in this form she likes the flavor because you can't really yeah maybe she's like, like hannah where she likes the flavor of mushrooms but not the consistency right.
Somebody had a great suggestion for a kitchen that's closed, the Elbag Canal, where they pull boats up that thingy. Cool. Yeah, it's very cool. We'll do, we'll do that. We have I have lots of ideas, guys, for kitchens closed. Tons and tons and tons of ideas. We have ideas, In just session, not not the time. Not the time, not yet. Not yet. We're but working on it. We'll we'll try we'll try to do better. Yeah, the springtime maybe, huh? Yeah. Because the campgrounds aren't even open yet, and we like camping instead of staying in hotels. Because hotels are gross. <laughs> so what was this your? This looks delicious. What was your inspiration for the Easter book? Like, how did that come about? So I felt after publishing my family table, the red book, I felt like like in more recipes needed to go in it but because of the cost of printing and really logistics um, I had to keep the size of the book to a certain number of recipes otherwise it would just be too expensive so I thought you know we have the Christmas book that has some of the recipes that aren't in the big book and some of these Easter recipes aren't in the Red Book or in the Christmas book. Uh, so, and then too, there wasn't a place in my family table to talk about Easter. And, uh, and like we get a lot of questions about some of the traditions of like the Easter basket and like what we do and what are the certain foods that we eat. And... Um, like I, I was on the radio earlier today. Uh, I'll post a link to that too. You can listen to it with Andy. And Andy was saying that people in in America may like they adjust. They just want to cook some Polish food for Easter. So they their first uh, kind of instinct is to make pierogi because that's like the most popular Polish dish that they know. But we don't. Like we don't do pierogi for Easter. We do we certain sure we do certain foods that get uh, cooked around the Easter time, and like it's fun to do it, even if it's once a year. It like, kind of makes it special and yeah. makes it. So I wanted to share that with people, and you know maybe it would bring up some, you know, it would bring up some memories for people, or expand what they. You know, if they're if they're if they're of Polish heritage, right? Expanding and finding it. I, I wish I could track my lineage as easily as a lot of Polish Americans can. Right. So. I mean, mine is like Finnish and Swedish, and I don't want a lot of the food that's up there. So we're gonna come closer over here again, okay. and I'm gonna keep oh, this. Oh, really spin. quick. Yeah. A good um, suggestion that is coming in the comments for replacing yep. um, the the mushrooms was black olives. Oh, that'd be interesting. We wouldn't call them yam, yaika, yaya po polsku then. No, but they could be <laughs> yaya po polsku amerikansku. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like steady chicken. Yeah. So I'm heating some butter, and what we're gonna do now? I'm gonna put a little bit of breadcrumbs in here. Okay. These are just normal unseasoned breadcrumbs, right? Yep. Okay. And some of these I can see I can stuff a little bit better. Just. So a little fall. And with heaps even. I have a little bit more filling here, so. So this is what we're looking like, folks. They're heaping. Some They're heaps. heaps. And as this is melting. I'm going to grab the phone and see what else we can talk about here while we're waiting for melting butter. Okay. Let's see here. Andy from WEBR? Um, Andy Goembiowski. Um, I can't remember the radio station. Probably. But probably. Yeah, probably. Do we, do we cook lamb on Easter? No. No. No, we cook. We eat. So f opening act on Easter Sunday is, well, once we share the egg from the Schwinzonka, we'll have 
the sour rice soup for breakfast with a fresh Polish sausage, either served together or separately with uh, some horseradish or mustard or whatever, or the horseradish with beets, which I love. Uh, and then we'll have the chicken or pork gelatins and sawatka uh, jarzynowa, which is the, the mixed veggie salad with mayonnaise, uh, sliced hams and other, uh, other lunch meats that we make ahead of time, um, lots of eggs, with tartar sauce <laughs> um, and so we'll eat that and then we'll have in a little while we'll have dessert and then we'll eat that again throughout the day and then on on monday normally there'll be a, something different so like either a goose or a duck or maybe a pork roast um, and you know, rosu, chicken soup, or some people do blood soup still. My family uh, outside Sherat's, where my, my grandma Babcha Stasha is from. So this is her family. They still do Tarnina, the, blood, the duck blood soup for, for special occasions like Easter, Christmas, christenings and weddings and, and oh, such. Oh, thank you. It's delicious. People are asking, am I going to Shmingus or Jingus on Monday? <laughs> Uh, yes, we do have uh, the water um, squirtings in this family, but we only have one rule, and that is it cannot be done whilst the person is in bed. <laughs> that's a, that's her, a new rule. Her dad used to... <laughs> hey, I remember one time we first got married. I think it was probably the Easter after Hannah was born, our daughter. Are you kind of, Wait, yeah. I have to show this. Okay, sorry. So now we're going to take our egg and put it down into the... Like this. Yeah. And into the pan. No kidding. I never watched you make these before. I just ate them. And now we're going to cook the egg that's raw in there a little bit. Huh. That's very cool. And um, put a little color on these. Yeah. So getting back to the story. Aja and I are in bed sleeping, and Dad sneaks in, Aja's father, with a bottle of water to spray us with. Cold water. Cold, cold water. <laughs> and he just pulls the covers off. We're married, by the way, and young <laughs> at this point. And um, normally, I'm in my birthday suit when I'm sleeping. Luckily, this time, I was not, because he would have gotten a show. Quite, quite the show for Easter. Easter show. <laughs> but then he sprayed us, and we decided that we could never do that again in bed, because this is not fair, man. You're defenseless in bed. Absolutely defenseless. <laughs> So that's and I have, a, I have a request to all the people who are watching yeah. and who are participating in the sh Shmigus Dingus. Please don't call it Dingus Day. No, it's not It Dingus makes us Day. sound like... Stupid. It, it's shmi, Shmigus Dingus. It's, yeah. yeah. Please yeah. call it Shmigus Dingus. We don't call it Dingus Day. Uh, it's Shmigus Dingus. It's fun words. <laughs> Dingo's Day makes us sound like us Poles need, you know, we need a bit of help. What is this dish called again? This? Yeah. Yaya Popolsku. Yaya Popolsku. There you go, RV Davy. Um, do, do we do, they're, they're asking about the, the egg, um, the egg knocking. Oh, you know, yeah. We, we, yeah. we should do. Uh, on Sunday, Somebody said their dad used the wooden egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like grandpa's job is to have the, the wooden egg. All right. So people don't know. We're not going to do it. Here, you take this okay. because this is these are raw eggs, by the way. But you hold it, right? And then you see who can, like, she'll hit my egg. We'll go like this. Yeah. Knock, and then whoever keeps the unbroken egg right. wins. Right. And, like, we go around the table and... Right knock each other's eggs to hard-boiled eggs to see yeah hard-boiled who wins yeah yeah, yeah. 
Thank you, B, for the donation. Thank you very much. You were awesome. Thank you for supporting the channel. Oh, that's so nice. Where's Where's uh, your mother from, Aja? My mom was born just outside of Szczecin here in Stargard. In Stargard. Stargard we yeah. have a video on Stargard. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. city. Yeah. If you guys ever want to see. We spent a lot of time there when we were kids. My grandma, uh, after, so the area obviously we're, we're in now, stretching the west side of um, Poland, used to be German before the war. And when the war ended, uh, my grandma came from the uh, middle of Poland around Łódź and Sierat uh, from a small village. Uh, she came to stretching here because her boyfriend my grandpa came here after the war he was from the lands that from Vilno that was no longer Polish and ended up really without any family uh, they tried finding his parents and his uh, siblings through Red Cross but weren't able to locate anyone so he decided to come here to Stargard because he was a rail railroad worker and he knew he could find a job there and how it looked after the war is you would just walk through town and kind of claim a, an apartment or a house or whatever you, th you think you needed or your family needed and then go to the city and register yourself with the city and tell them this is your new residence. Hmm. So grandpa came and found an apartment and then gran <laughs> I remember grandma telling us uh, that she kind of didn't know all, oh, but they met um, during the war. They were working for the same German farmer um, west of here, a few hundred kilometers west. Uh, that's where they met. So she was kind of debating whether she should come here uh, to follow Jadek or her boyfriend. Then she was like 17. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like the age of our daughter now. No, heck no. <laughs> and she she decided to, to do that, to follow him here, and then they got married and my mom was born here. So we're from here now. That's very cool. Yeah. Does, what does Schmigus Dingus mean? Does it mean There's, something? Uh, well, Schmigus, it's from word Schmigach, meaning uh, like run fast. Um, and I, maybe there's a meaning to dingles as well. Not that I know of, I tried researching a little bit, but um, but it originated in uh, boys trying to squirt squirt water at, you or know. Or throw water on Yeah, th yeah, not squirt. Yeah. Like throw cold well water. Oh, look, these are ready. Yay. Turn this off. And normally I like like to lay out some lettuce here or some sure, greenery sure. so like when this is resting on it, it looks kind of... So basically Schmigus Dingus was a way to flirt with the girl he liked in your Yeah! <laughs> it gets a little crazy now. It's on the news, they show like people hosing down old ladies and like... Yeah, you go... It gets ridiculous. You go on the street on, on, on Monday and you better be prepared to get wet. Yeah. Hooligans. Hooligans. <laughs> the young hooligans. And so I, try that back home, you get shot. Wait. Thank mm. you, Sean Riley. You're awesome. And here's our eggs. And these are, um, they taste great, um, like this warm, uh, straight out of the pan. But they're really good cold as well. So yeah. if you don't want to spend the time... Uh, the day of, you can prepare them ahead of time and serve them out of the fridge. Tasty, tasty. But they're tasty like this. Okay, let's go back over this, this way. That concludes all my dishes. Well, pull them over. You know, oh. Stand and, <laughs> Would you like to say, eat one? Well, yeah, once they calm down. Yeah. They're a little spicy for me right now. So I owe you a video <laughs> of how to make Pascha. Yeah. And I will... Um, do that better. <laughs> but let me uh, just let you know that the book is on pre-sale now. That means if you buy it, you also get an ebook. So once you go through your checkout, you get an email confirmation email. There'll be a link to an ebook. You can open it right away and start using it and start cooking. And I hope you do.
Now bear with us on international uh, shipping, guys. Yep, our book will be um, it will be ready next week. And as soon as we get it, we're gonna start shipping it. Yep. We're shipping to uh, shipping to US is normally uh, around seven business days, uh, and sometimes it gets there even quicker. Um, Canada, if you do priority, it gets there about ten business days. Australia is now open. Shipping is open to Australia. And they even open priority shipping too. Uh, I can't tell you exact times yet. To because Australia? Yeah, because we don't have data from, okay. from that. Cause but I want to say something about Australia. Okay, listen, Aussies. You know where you live. You live in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. <laughs> so if you order a book, just forget you did. And then someday, it'll be a great surprise when you get one. And don't email us after three weeks. Because guess what? <laughs> it's in the ocean. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry, that's my thank you. That's your rant? It's not so much a rant as a reminder to the, our wonderful Aussie brothers and sisters of where they live. Um, what else? Oh, giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Okay. Normally we do a question <laughs> and whoever can email me with an answer will do three people. An email? Yeah. So what's the email? First of all, everyone get your Everybody pen and paper. Everybody get your pen and paper or and your so phone. You can, or phone and open up your email. We'll give us, like, we'll give you guys like 20 or 30 seconds here. We'll chat and a little bit. And let's see what question we can we'll chat ask. A bit. Let's see, yeah, okay. Um, and then see. once we ask the question, you can send us uh, your email. And in it, please include your first and last name, your shipping address. And that's it. Yeah. Or, like, if you don't have time to send that, that's fine. Send the answer immediately. We will <laughs> respond to you to yeah. get that stuff. Yeah. All right? So now, if you have... And but this only I... works for the live, folks. So if you're watching this after the live, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so don't don't try it. It just doesn't work. And you'll get a copy of my book, signed. Okay, what's the email address? Oh, the email address is polishyourkitchen at gmail.com. Okay. Easy. Polish your so kitchen now, at gmail.com. If you're writing it into your computer, polish your kitchen at gmail.com. All right, now, first, okay, we'll ask the question as soon as I get the first comment on here that they're ready. <laughs> someone's ready. Um, the book will come signed. And. Um, okay, first of all. First of sorry. all. Sorry. Yeah. People are asking, how can I order the book? Oh, you can go to my website at polishyourkitchen.com. And up at the top, there's a tab called Bookstore, and that's where I keep all my books. So you can okay. go there and place an order, and you can either pay with PayPal, or if you go through uh, the checkout, there'll be an option to pay with credit card if you if you would rather. Will it eventually be on Amazon as well? It will eventually be on Amazon, but it still ships from our office here in Stretchin. Okay. Um, Easter egg hunts, do they do those in Poland? They don't do those. Not really. No. I mean, maybe now people do game. more um, where they hide, hide eggs. But what we used to do, or my parents used to do for us, is my mom would put together a small, like a small kind of a basket or a gift that she would hide somewhere in the house. And then on Easter morning, we would search for it. But there was no eggs. Uh, and it was normally something small, like some sweets and... Um, you know, maybe a small toy, but there was no egg hunts. Okay, so what's the question? It's got to be something easy. Uh, people got to type quick because <laughs> like research and stuff. So three people uh, will do a we'll giveaway. We'll give away three books to people who email us the answer to uh, to the question. Um, should it be around about Easter or about PYK? Doesn't matter. Oh, wait, I shouldn't be touching that. <laughs> uh, do you have one? I uh, don't. Hold on. <laughs> um, okay. What okay. is the the soup that I mentioned today? What is that starter made from? Which one? Which soup? I don't even remember. The Easter soup. Jurek. Okay. Oh, what's don't. the starter for Jurek? Yeah. Like, what is it made from? That should be a very big hint. What is the starter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> There's the question. <laughs> we have to clean up our trashed kitchen now. Yeah, you but we, still. we thank you for uh coming and hanging out with us a little bit and we appreciate you watching always. 
Uh, you are the reason why we run this show the way, you know, maybe you could be better. <laughs> but <laughs> we appreciate the kind words. We have yes. very kind viewers and we very much appreciate it. Yes, we do. We love uh, you guys. So thank you again. And we will hopefully see you in the kitchen very soon.